What's up everybody? Ibex here. Welcome to another video. Welcome from Akihabara, Tokyo in the middle of the night. We got a lovely guitar player playing there in front of the station. <laughs> it is currently 1.56 a.m. Monday morning. Now why am I here in the middle of the night? Well, there's two reasons. Um, number one, I wanted to talk about something, a little bit of topic discussion point for this video and you can probably guess what it is based on the video title. And then the other reason is because I just can't sleep. I just got back from Switzerland a couple days ago, have not beaten the jet lag yet. And I figured let's go for a walk. And you know what? Why not walk around Akihabara at night for a little bit, see what it's like at night. Uh, I'll talk about the topic, but also give you a bit of a tour. You know, there's some, show you some card stores. There's Dragon Star here, Card Rush, you know, just, I don't know, walk around a bit, see Akihabara at night. I'm sure most people have never seen it this time of day. And uh, yep, just have a bit of a bit of a talk. And uh, whenever I see an interesting store or something, I might, I don't know, say something about the store or whatever. We'll see how it goes. Very spontaneous video. I just couldn't sleep and I figured let's just head to Akihabara. So we're walking from the station now towards kind of the main area. You can see the Gigo uh, arcade place there. And there's also, you know, that's where most of the cards are back there. Um, there's also some down here as well. We might even find a couple of vending machines that might still be out at night uh, for some crazy mystery pack stuff. If we're, if we're feeling real, real dumb, <laughs> we could look into that. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. There's still some stuff happening over there. Some action in the back, crazy, crazy cars. All right, topic of the video. I hope you can hear me by the way. I'm just testing out this mic setup and everything. Uh, topic of this video, are Japanese or Tokyo card stores are running out of cards? <laughs> um, there have been a lot of, a lot of videos recently. Uh, people, you know, coming to Japan, buying cards and doing that type of content. It's been kind of popping off on YouTube uh, in recent times and uh, I very much enjoy that content. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, KB Pokemon Amir Collects, um, just a couple that come to my mind. Uh, yeah, very entertaining content and uh, you should check it out. But I think those videos have sparked a bit of FOMO in some people. I got a comment on one of my car store videos, which by the way, I'll, I'll get back to doing. <laughs> I was in Switzerland for two months, so I'm finally back, but I'll get back to those videos. Uh, someone left a comment and essentially they said, you know, what's going to happen once uh, more and more people buy from Japan, eventually, you know, there's less and less of these older and mid-era cards and you know, what will happen? When that, when that occurs. And the first thing I want to say, I think we'll take a left down here. Um, the first thing I'll say about that is, do not underestimate the sheer amount of cards that are still very much in Japan. Like a lot of these cards are very, very, very heavily printed. And so there's plenty of them around, I'm not running out anytime soon. And the other thing is that um, I, I think it's, it's not as big of a deal as some people think it is. Um, I just, uh, it came to my mind, uh, Ernie Collects Earn uploaded a video the other day and he was in Japan recently for a day. And he also mentioned like, oh, there's, you know, I couldn't really find anything in stores. They're all kind of empty. And I, I think it's, it's, it can be such a different experience depending on like when you go. You know, living in Japan, I've kind of experienced this myself where it's like, you know, you might go to a store and it has nothing. And then you might go back, I don't know, a week later and they are full of good cards. So that's also, that's also a thing. And that's, that's been a thing since forever. Um, so if you come to Japan and you don't find anything good, you could potentially have just kind of gotten unlucky in a way so that that can definitely happen now uh, where was I okay so this is kind of the area back here walking into there's a lot of stores back here and uh, yeah a lot of a lot of good stores here as well uh, this is the main road and usually I would say like the main road stores aren't always good but actually Akihabara has a couple of really good ones on the main road we might, we might walk past them later but uh, let's see if we can go into one of these like kind of back alleys. They're always interesting in Japan, aren't they? So yeah, um, 
the, the thing is with like people coming to your van and buying stuff, um, it might seem like it's a big deal if you watch these videos, but truth be told, there's plenty of people in Japan who buy a lot of cars. <laughs> like I've seen it many, many, many times in different stores where locals come in and just buy half of the old back hollows. You know, maybe to resell on eBay or Medicare, I don't know. But it's definitely, you know, not just people coming to Japan doing it. Oh, here's an interesting one. So right here, so <laughs> everything looks very much different at night, obviously. Uh, but this is uh, Fuku Fuku Toreka, one of many. Um, this one always has like really good stuff, really nice cards and slabs and packs and everything. But it's definitely one of the more expensive stores. Uh, just here on this corner. But yeah, let's walk, let's walk down here. I hope, I hope the video is bright enough. I hope the sound is okay. I'm just testing out this new camera I bought specifically, kind of for the car store videos, not gonna lie. But yeah, uh, you know, locals here, Japanese people, they buy plenty of cards all the time as well. Um, and the other thing too is that I genuinely think that it's a problem that just fixes itself, if it is a problem. I don't think it's a problem, at least not right now but it is a problem that just fixes itself. So here is another Dragon Star. Uh, Dragon Star is one of the bigger chains in Japan. Kind of, I don't know, it's okay. They have mostly modern, uh, but they're not bad. Decent prices. All right, not much back there. Let's go back to this kind of main road here. Yeah, I just, I think it's a problem that will most likely just fix itself if it ever gets out of control. Uh, you know, <laughs> if stuff actually truly gets scarce, like some, don't get me wrong, like it is not as easy to find older mint cards as it used to be, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. But it's, I don't think it's a problem yet. Um, but you know, if this stuff truly gets really scarce, really, really scarce, then it's just gonna get more expensive in Japan. And if, if it gets more expensive in Japan, then people outside of Japan might just stop buying those cards because the margins maybe aren't there anymore. Now, of course, on paper, you can say that, hypothetically speaking, if they get more expensive in Japan, then they'll get also more expensive outside of Japan. But then there's kind of the question, what is this? Comic internet esports starts, interesting. But like, oh, that scared me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope the audio is okay, by the way. Uh, I'm, I notice this mic has like a noise canceling or like background noise canceling function, but I don't like it. It always sounds kind of weird when I see it in other people's videos. So I'm trying it without it. I hope the cars and stuff aren't too loud. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, demand, right? If these type of cars, let's say old bag vintage hollows, if they get more expensive outside of Japan, then are the people there to buy it, you know? I think we're already at a point with, especially old bags, where, you know, people aren't really buying them anymore to flip, or hardly ever these days. I think Amir collects in one of his videos, again, highly recommend checking out his, his, his channel and his videos, very entertaining. I think he mentioned, you know, he's not really buying old bags anymore because he's kind of seen, seen them all and they're not interesting anymore. Um, by the way, we're now we're going to one of my favorite stores in Akihabara. Bit of a secret. I never see it in the, I never see it in the, in the car shopping video. So, ooh, spicy, but no. Um, yeah, he said he's kind of seen enough old bags. He's not really interested in them anymore. But also, I, I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, of, of course, right? But I also think maybe it also has to do with there just not really being margins anymore for those cards, or it's very hard to get good margins, just because they've gotten harder to find and they've gotten more expensive. And so the problem has kind of fixed itself in that people aren't really buying them in mass quantity anymore, or not as often as they used to. And you know, right now people are targeting other cards, mid-era cards, etc. Um, it's funny, Opec hollows in car stores, mint ones, mint ones, by the way, here are often more expensive than PSA 9s. And I've seen mint raw ones more expensive than PSA 10s. It's kind of wild. 
<laughs> so I think the market is in a bit of a weird place right now where grading has gotten popular too and it's just the prices are a bit, a bit strange with those type of cards. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, yeah, so now we're kind of out of the main Akihabara mess. Um, I also hope the video isn't too dark. Maybe I'll try and make it a little bit brighter here. Maybe it's a bit too late for that, but... I don't know, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, so, yeah, it's coming up up there. Um, yeah, with PSA in Japan especially, it's, the market is in kind of a weird place. Like, PSA 9s are oftentimes kind of fire sold in stores even. Like, people don't really want the 9s here, so you can get really good deals on 9s, by the way. Um, if you're looking for, like... Sorry about those loud bikes. <laughs> if you're looking for, like, mint binder copies, like, going with the PSA 9s is, like, pretty decent. All right, here's the store. Um, it's called, in Japanese, uh, Kardon. Card on in English. Card on. It's owned by a Japanese YouTuber. I think his name is Tomohapi. Pretty, pretty big YouTuber. And he's sometimes in a store himself. Very chill guy. And it's a good, good store to check out. They don't have the, the most cards. Uh, not a huge selection. But I've never been disappointed with their prices and conditions. All right, let's head back into kind of the, main, the main area. Uh, yeah, the flickering as well. I hope, it's in, I hope the video isn't flickering too much. I tried to adjust the anti-flicker, but it doesn't seem to do the best job. Anyways, where was I? What was I saying? All right, sorry for the cut right there. Um, I had to catch my, catch my thoughts. And also there's some people coming and it's really awkward <laughs> speaking when people are walking past. <laughs> I have to get used to it. Um, but yeah, market is in a weird place. Um, the problem fixing itself, right? Um, one thing that's interesting is that I think a lot of cards that are being bought for reselling um, already don't make a lot of sense. Like I think Ern in his video uh, mentioned that like, you know, he couldn't really find anything that made sense to buy. Except for some like binder copies, I think he said, or binder, yeah, binder cards. But I think it also depends on how you sell cards, right, if you're a seller. The avenue that you choose to sell your cards and the community you build around yourself. I think a lot of people are buying a lot of cards in Japan, sell on whatnot. And of course on whatnot, you can get away with some stuff. <laughs> Not, nothing negative, definitely nothing negative here. Just kind of like the way it works, right? You have those dip boxes, I think they're called, where you have a hundred duds and five hits. And you have insane margins on the hundred duds. And technically on the hits, you know, you might pick them up in Japan and there might not be the best deals ever, but because you have insane margins on the other 100 cards, it kind of works out that way. And it just, it's fine. You know, it's a good deal, essentially. Uh, these lights are insane up here. I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's, let's take a left here. This is, we're back at uh, Fuku Fuku Toreka, by the way, here. I'm gonna see it there. All right, let's take a left here. Uh, or actually, let me think. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, Okay, we're gonna walk past Mandarake. Going across the big street here. Uh, yeah, sorry if I'm just rambling, but I'm very tired. But I can't sleep, jet lag. All right, <laughs> let's see if we can cross this street safely. We see a convenience store, I might grab, I might grab uh, something to drink. Oh, I'm gonna run, 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 run. All right. All right, let's go back here. So like, yeah, I just want to say like, I don't think it's a problem right now. Um, I'm, you know, going back to 2016, 2015, 2016, I'll just let this, let this truck pass. 2015, 2016 were my first Japan car shop experiences. And of course, back then, you know, <laughs> you had uh, much more available carts, you know, much more choices, cards to choose from, obviously, of course. But it's not like every store had, you know, 10 mint dark Charizard hollows from Team Rocket. You know, that was not the case. All right, this is Mandarake, by the way, this huge black building. Um, I haven't been in here in a while. The last time I came here, I was quite disappointed with their selection. So I might come back in a future video. I think this is some of the stuff they sell. You know, do tons of... Uh, toys, etc. as well. 
Um, but of course, you know, no doubt things have gotten harder to find. Things have gotten more expensive. I remember um, in, let's see, go down here. Oh, this is, this one is Sudogaya, the blue one. They have some decent stuff sometimes. Um, three years ago, 2021, is when I kind of got back into the hobby again. And I remember going to Dragon Star in Kyoto. And they, oh, this is another Toreka Sunrise. I'm not sure if I've been here before, but you see card stores everywhere. Uh, yeah, I went to um, Dragon Star Kyoto, and they had Heart Gold and Soul Silver booster packs. I think two booster boxes worth, just laid out. Uh, 17 or 18,000 yen a pack. Today, uh, those packs are being sold for. I think 50,000 yen in stores, more than double the price, you know. All the vintage old back packs as well have gotten more expensive, although base set has come down a little bit again in Japan in recent times. I think another symptom, I think maybe, of there not being really outside Japan demand for that product anymore because they were too expensive in Japan, so they've gotten a little bit cheaper again maybe, right? Um, so I think, yeah, like, I just think it is a problem that will fix itself. Like I've already mentioned a few times. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, every time when I'm in Switzerland, of course, you know, uh, I look for stuff to buy in Switzerland, Japanese stuff specifically. Uh, now I always sell, when I'm in Switzerland, I sell cards. That's kind of how I found my hobby with the stuff I am able to sell during my Swiss summer vacations. And uh, this year I only bought one thing. Uh, this is another store, Rai Rai, Kado Shoppu Rai Rai. Um, I bought one thing this year. I bought a booster pack, a shiny collection booster pack. Really cool set. I mean, it's a very small set. I think it's like 20 cards and five secret rares. <laughs> Tiny set. But it is the one with the cool, the cool Mew card. Um, what is something here? What is this? Oh, they're closed. No, wait, there's 24. Oh, there you go. This could be, this could be interesting. I'll get back to the booster pack in just a second. Okay, they say they're closed. But here it says, uh, okay, so they're buying cards from 1 to 7.30. Kaitori Yukitsuke. And then they're selling between 1 and 8. And then, oh, they have an Oripa Jidon Hanki. Or Jihanki, sorry, Jihanki. So an Oripa vending machine, 24 hours. Now, where would it be? Are we doing some DGEN stuff? <laughs> um, it's certainly not in here. Let me figure this out. I might have to make a cut. I don't think I don't think it's in here. I think that's some maid cafes, maybe. <laughs> uh, one second. There it is. We actually walked past it. So I was just standing down there. So this is the buy corner. That's where they buy cards. Figured it out. It's right here. When I walked past here earlier, I thought it was a parking garage. I didn't read the text. <laughs> I didn't look inside. Who's too focused talking about the booster pack? Okay, so let's see. Here we go. We got some stuff here. Should we do some degen stuff? How can you, how horribly can you get ripped off at uh, <laughs> Oripa vending machines at 2 a.m. in Akiba? Which one should we get? I wish they had like a mid-era one. Um, yeah, I don't do Oripas usually. Uh, it's not really how I like to spend my money, but it might be fun for this video. Why not? But I don't want to do like, let's do a cheap one. Let's do a thousand yen. Maybe this one, main prize, the Miriam, or maybe that one. This one's 3,000, mm, I don't know. It's a lot of, lot of focus on trainer cards here, isn't it? I think this might be the coolest one. We got some SARs in here as well. Uh, what about over here? Oh, this one's, okay, so this one's, oh, 500 yen. AR, CHR. Okay, so definitely kind of cheaper stuff here. Oh gosh, which one should I do? 
Okay, you know what? Let's do one of each. Let's do one of these and then do one of the expensive ones. Let, let me get my coin out. Or not expensive. We'll do, okay, we'll do this one first. The 1,000 yen one. Why not? <laughs> let's be silly. All right, let's 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 go with let's go with this one. Okay, okay. I don't have anything to. I don't have the little tripod for the camera, so we'll have to do it like one-handed. At least we've got the gimbal. Okay. Oh, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yeah, that's one card. Okay, well, that was not very good. Uh, the way I rate Oripas, by the way, um, is by how decent the, the dots are. You can have a bad, a bad one, but still have like cool cards, you know? Like, I would have rather had like a plate mid era hollow there than that shiny. I don't know. That's just me. All right, let's do one of these 500 yen ones. Why not? Maybe we get a little luckier. But that's it. That's all I'm willing to spend at the, <laughs> at the freaking vending machine. Okay. Another one. Okay, so <laughs> another shiny for 500 yen less. I'll take it. Okay, whatever. Oh, there's actually two cards in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, never mind. It looked like it. Just one card. All right, I'm moving on. Moving on. Yeah, I bought a booster pack in Switzerland. Shiny collection. Uh, for my booster pack collection that I'm kind of, kind of working on. Uh, just packs that I think look cool. No, no specific goal to complete a certain set. Just packs that I like the look of. Shiny Collection is one of those. So I bought one of those for 200 Swiss francs, which is like, I don't know, 220 bucks maybe, US dollars. Well, in Japan, they sell for about twice as much. Kind of crazy, right? So that right there, oh, let's see. Let me go to this way. So that's an example of what I think is the market fixing itself, if this is a problem. Because if you can buy a shiny collection booster pack for 200 bucks in Switzerland, or let's just say Europe, which by the way, I don't even know is like, if that's like a good deal. I'm just coming from the Japanese perspective or someone who lives in Japan. <laughs> but if you can buy it for 200 bucks in Europe, why would, any buy, why would anybody buy it for 400 bucks from Japan, right? There we go. That's one of my favorite buildings right here. It's a little dark. I'll show you a little bit, a little bit closer here. Okay, so ninth floor, we have PDG collector shop. Decent, decent enough. Eighth floor is Otachi, one of the best uh, vintage card selections. Oh, seventh floor is also PDG. I didn't know that. I thought it was a different one. But yeah, uh, best vintage card selection in all of Akihabara, but you know, they, they're up there with the price. They're not cheap. You have to pay for clean cards here, for sure. But deals to be found here and there, for sure. Uh, my Versus here is a mystery break I bought at this store. And then on the fourth floor, we have, oh, that's very dark, sorry about that, El Dorado. And El Dorado is like decent enough. They don't have like the most cards ever. But you know, it's worth checking out. All right, I want to try and head back Oh, there's a family mart. That's my goal. Let's go over to the family mart to finish the video. I'll grab a, something to drink there. I'm just rambling on. Um, yeah, that booster pack is a good example. You know, if, if, if you can get it for half the price outside of Japan, there's nobody buying it from Japan to flip it, right? All right, that was a very loud garbage truck right there. I need to cross the road somewhere. You know, Japan has its own market. And so, it, just because stuff is half the price outside of Japan doesn't mean it will get cheaper in Japan. But at least the problem, or the so-called problem that that commenter addressed is fixed, because nobody's buying that pack to flip. It's kind of happening with the Japanese base set, 1996 packs. You know, they're cheaper, usually outside of Japan as well. Flippers aren't really picking up those packs. And collectors neither. You know, collectors know how to check prices. And
and this is also not meant to be like, oh, you know, all the evil flippers. Absolutely not, not at all. Just trying to explain that I don't think this is a big problem. Okay, across the road, lots of loud cars and motorcycles. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic. I mean, of course, things have gotten scarcer, things have gotten more expensive, um, but that's easily explainable. You know, way more people collect Japanese cars than they used to. It's inevitable that things get more expensive and scarcer, obviously. Um, but I don't think it will ever like tip. I don't think we'll ever get to the point where stuff is not available anymore in Japan and you know it's just oh it's horrible here now I don't think that will happen there's so many cars <laughs> it's crazy and some stuff does make its way back to Japan just like the shiny collection booster pack I bought in Switzerland and brought back to my home in Tokyo and so <laughs> in a weird way if it ever were to become a real problem and the prices would be completely off then I'll just buy tons of stuff in Europe and bring it back to Japan like and I can sell it here for a profit if that's what I want to do right let's buy something to drink Cheers. That's lovely. All right, I'm not sure, I'm not really sure where I wanna go now. I uh, kinda wanna finish the video, but maybe some final thoughts. Um, I think this little bit of FOMO that's happening with some people, I think it's a symptom of these videos getting popular. But I don't think these people buying carts. It's actually kind of crazy how much traffic there is at 2.15 a.m. <laughs> I mean, to get away from the garbage truck. <laughs> it's like following us, or we're following it, you know. But I don't think people coming here to buy stuff is like a huge, a huge issue. I'm certainly not concerned with it. There have been always times when things are hard to find, you know. If I'm just looking online as well. Oh God, there's more. Oh, that's something else. Uh, maybe we don't show that. <laughs> um, you know, there's periods where I won't buy anything for two months because I, I can't find a good deal. But then, you know, just before I came to Switzerland, I found like 10 amazing deals on Medicati in one day, two days maybe. Right? So, I don't know. It's get, it has gotten tougher to find deals. Things are more expensive, but there's still plenty of good deals out there. And I think as, as well, it depends a bit on what your goals are. Like if you're trying to grade cards or like come to Japan to buy cards to grade, I think you'll have a significantly worse time than if you come to buy binder copies. Because binder copies, especially in like the, let's call it like moderate played condition, like you can find awesome deals, like absolutely awesome deals, if you're okay with that. Uh, doesn't mean you can't find gradable cards, but you're just gonna have a harder time and you might be disappointed. And also brings me to maybe, maybe the final, final thoughts of this pretty, pretty strange video that I don't even know if I'm gonna upload because I don't know what the video will look like and what the sound will sound like. But my number one recommendation, if you come to Japan, Tokyo, or any other city in Japan, doesn't matter. 
to buy Pokemon cards um, is to have an open mind and just see what's out there. I know, um, I think some people, oh, this, did you see the rat? There was a little rat down here. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I think it was a rat anyways, but you know, some people, they watch these card shop videos and what they want, oh, yep, there's definitely rats, <laughs> plenty. Uh, what they want is a list of stores to go through and you know th this is the store where all the good deals are so i need to watch the videos to find that one store and that one store doesn't exist um so just walking around exploring kind of what we were doing today you know just walking around akiba and finding different card stores all over the place maybe maybe not buying from vending machines you know <laughs> but you'll just have a much better time i don't know where i'm gonna go maybe over here um You'll just have a better time. It will be more fun. If you come here and you're like, oh, I need to find this card in PSA 10 worthy condition, and that's, that's my goal, then you might get really disappointed because you might not find the card at all or just not in the condition that you want it to be in. Or maybe your goal is to find gradable mid-era cards and you you're want to spend 50,000 yen in one day. It, you might not be able to do it, right? Maybe a week later you would. <laughs> But if you just come here with kind of an open mind to find cool cards, good deals, and you're kind of, I don't know, willing to look at other cards as well that you might not have so, so much in your focus and just kind of walk around and explore the area, I think that's how you have the most fun here. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Some things will be more available at certain times than other times, but that's just how it goes. All right, let's go. I don't know. There's a lot of maids standing around. I don't want to get them on camera. It's a little awkward. All right, we'll walk over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, maid cafes. Not my thing. <laughs> Not my thing. Okay. But I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, I'm going to find like a place to hang out to finish this beer. And then I'm going to head home and hopefully can I be able to sleep uh, yeah I'm back in Japan after two months in Switzerland longer than normally and uh, yeah I can't wait to get back to making videos the card store videos will come back uh, I have other videos already in mind that I want to make and so stay tuned look forward to them I hope I hope you watch them thank you very much if you do as always I appreciate you a lot if you enjoyed this video I would appreciate it. Thumbs up. Thanks so much for that. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Good night from 2.30-ish a.m. Akihabara. All right. Bye-bye.